Hello and welcome to another installment of a series of videos in which I'll be talking you through the basics of the programming language Python. If you haven't watched the first few videos yet, then I suggest you do that now. Otherwise, let's get started. Where we left off, we discussed how we can manipulate strings in various ways. This time, we're looking at how to create a program which features various pathways through it. The programs that we've made so far have been able to solve a given problem in a very specific scenario. The issue with these programs, though, is they aren't particularly dynamic. What we mean by this is they can't really react to varying situations. Here we introduce the if-then-else concept. We were able to create programs that react differently based on what information they're fed. But before we get to the if-then-else concept itself, we need to discuss two other ideas, conditions and logical operators. A condition, at least as programming languages are concerned, is a statement in which a true or false value can be evaluated. You may have met some of these before. The conditional operators that we're gonna be looking at include greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and equal to. They work as one might expect. If the condition given is true, a true, or one, value is returned. When the condition is false, a false, or zero value is returned. These values can be stored in variables. We can use these statements with variables or with static values. A logical operator is an operator which can be used to perform Boolean algebra with true and false values. We can use them to chain together certain conditions. There are three operators which we'll concern ourselves with. The AND operator returns a true value should both values operated on evaluate to true. The OR operator returns a true value should any of the values operated on evaluate to true. The NOT operator returns the opposite of the value passed into it. The truth tables displayed with these operators show what is output should a certain combination of values be input. Let's have a look at all this in action so we can actually see what's going on. I'm going to assign a variable with a value. We'll pretend this is an age. We'll then check if that value is greater than or equal to 18. This outputs a true value should our value apply to this condition. We can then end this statement with another condition, checking if the value is less than or equal to 25. What we're essentially doing here is checking if someone's a young adult, aged between 18 and 25. If we enter any number between these bounds, a true value will be returned. Otherwise, a false value will be returned. Okay then, we've discussed conditions and logical operators. Now how does all this tie in with if-then-else statements? Well, an if-then-else statement uses a true or false value to determine how to execute. An if statement consists of the word if, followed by a condition and then a colon. This colon, combined with tabbing, is a way Python determines scope. Scope refers to the extent of code to which something is relevant. In this case, everything written after the colon, which has been tabbed in once, belongs to the if statement. It will only execute should the condition of our statement return true. That's all well and good, but what if we want to capture another separate condition as part of this if statement? Well, you can do this using the elif statement. Keeping the same indentation as our original if statement, we can capture other eventualities by writing elif and then our condition followed by a colon. Then what if we wanted to just capture everything else but the initial if statements? Well, we can use an else statement followed by a colon. Should the if and any elif statement fail the conditions, the code in the else block will execute. Just so you know, the elif and else statements are not required, but the initial if statement is always required. Now we've got all the theory out of the way, let's have a go at a challenge. The challenge is to create a program that asks a user for their name and age. You then to tell them whether they're old enough to see a certain film. The film that I'll be using is Ghost Stories, a movie which has an age rating of 15. As usual, pause the video now if you want to have a go yourself, otherwise, let's get to this. First things first, we're going to have to get their name and age. We've done this in the first two episodes. We use an input statement to populate a name variable, and then we use another input statement to populate an age variable. Now, because we're gonna be comparing the age variable to a number variable, we'll have to convert this age variable to a number type. We'll use integer, as it doesn't really matter if someone's age 14.39 years old, they still can't see our 15 rated movie. Now to the if statement. What we wanna check is this person's age is greater than or equal to 15 to allow them entry. Otherwise, we tell them they can't enter the film. We can do this by using the greater than or equal to operator. We can now print out a message for this person saying that they can enter the film. Be sure to use their name just to make it a bit more personal. Remember to tab in all your code to be executed by the if statement. Now, we could leave it here if we wanted to, but it's a bit rude to ignore someone who's younger than 15. We should give them a message as well to tell them they're not old enough. Here we can use an else statement to capture the users who fail the age check. We can print out the message, sorry, and then their name. You're not old enough to see ghost stories. This is looking just about finished, but we can also add an elif statement if we wanted, check that the user wasn't entering crazy numbers for their ages. For example, should the user enter an age that is less than zero, or greater than 150, we'd tell them they're just not making any sense. Let's add this elif statement now. Finally, to test it, I'll take the role of three users, Oliver, age 24, Lucy, age 10, and Gavin the Destroyer, age 1000. We can see that Oliver has been allowed in, Lucy's been denied entry, 
and Gavin's been upset by the rude age check app. Poor show. Now that's a shame. Gavin's gone on a rampage, destroying the entire town, including the cinema. I guess no one will get to watch the film now. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and hit that bell button to keep updated with the series. Handy websites have been added to the description below if you want to do any extra reading, and remember to keep practicing. Again, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.